Good morning, everyone. My name is Paul Drodos, and uh, I am the part-time Sustainability Commission uh, Coordinator for the City of Red Wing. Um, my job this morning is to uh, kind of uh, introduce, make some introductions, and also to start with some thank yous, because uh, in order to put a program like this together, we require uh, we required some participation from a lot of people. And I'd like to first of all thank the, uh, the staff at Pier 55 who have been very helpful in not only promoting this and uh, doing some flyers, but also uh, they put together the, the program and the spot. And we're just very thankful to Steph Brown, who was in charge of that, and uh, Shirley Ziegler, Linda Rader, Shirley Perkins, and Kim Wojcik, who uh, make this uh, such an excellent facility for our seniors in the Red Wing and local area. Uh, this also was a team effort because we are uh, participating and in involving ourselves with Excel Energy. And I would like to thank their staff for something called the Partners in Energy, which includes uh, uh, Emma Strauss, who will be uh, speaking and uh, facilitating a little while later, Tammy Gunderzak, who was in the back of the room here, and Yvonne Pfeiffer, who has been part of this program since the beginning. Partners in Energy was a program uh, established by Excel Energy in order for people to learn the importance of energy conservation. And we're going to talk a little bit about why that's so important in a minute. I'd also like to acknowledge the people that helped advertise this. And uh, those people include the uh, City of Red Wing, uh, the Channel 6 staff, uh, the Republican Eagle, which is here today, and I thank them for that. And of course, the actors that played in the fine videos, which we were using to perform or to uh, advertise this program, uh, that would be Laura Wildenberg, who is the uh, chair of the Sustainability Commission and did about a minute uh, uh, advertisement for Channel 6, and uh, the famous Judy Kupfer and Guy Williams, who uh, pitched in to do a, uh, a scripted uh, invitation to this and just discuss the importance of this program. So I want to thank them. Uh, Guy just incidentally was one of the uh, first people to actually uh, bring and discuss sustainability into the Redmond community years ago. So he has uh, very deep roots in this, uh, in this program, <coughs> in this movement, and we want to thank all the people that have uh, shared that information and uh, their bent on sustainability, which includes Marta, who is uh, one of our sustainability commissioners. Um, like you, they all share concerns about the environment, and they're all willing to volunteer their time to make it better, and that's why we're actually here this morning. I'd also like to thank Patrick Harris, who is our videographer for Channel 6. Um, he uh, will be recording this program, as I said earlier, in order that other people can share the information and hopefully participate in this really good opportunity to save energy. Perhaps some of you remember that uh, Red Wing had an alternative energy school years ago at Tower View at Burnside, and that was uh, in effect from 1987 until 1994. It was set up as a, lo a local alternative school in order to teach about alternative energy in response to oil embargoes and uh, boycotts that were happening in the 1980s. Uh, I graduated from that program in 1991 with a technical degree in wind energy conversion systems, which basically makes me a windmiller. <laughs> However, because electricity being what it is, I went on to a very successful career uh, for 21 years with Excel, which included at the end uh, nuclear by operations and uh, I was working at the Prairie Island Nuclear Plant. So my background in energy is pretty deep and pretty long and uh, this uh, matched well with the sustainability mission for the city of Red Wing. But while wind and solar were pretty new and pretty interesting and pretty flashy in those days, the uh, Alternative Energy School at Tower View taught a very important class called Energy Conservation. and. Uh, the lessons from that class are very important, and that's uh, why energy conservation is what it is and why we're here today. Now, there is no cleaner, cheaper, or better energy than energy that we do not waste. I just want to repeat that because it's really what we're here for. There is no cleaner, cheaper, or better energy than the energy that we do not waste. We see costly examples of wasted energy in our own homes. We see homes with inadequate insulation, weather stripping. We see homes left to uh, room temperature when no one's there. We see lights left on in rooms where nobody's in. And we see countless uh, appliances and uh, chargers that are continuously plugged in and using energy. And the only way we know they're there is because we get a bill for them. 
But the problem with that is, years ago, it was only the problem was the bill. And now we know there's some much, much, something much more sinister involved in this problem, which is, of course, the global warming caused by carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. Um, one single molecule, as you know, every time something burns, it gives off carbon dioxide, and those molecules are stay in the atmosphere, which then reflect heat. Instead of letting it go back into space, it actually keeps it within our atmosphere near the Earth. And that unwanted energy is really a problem, and it is real, and is getting worse. So one of the easiest things we can do, and everyone can do, is conserve energy, and how that energy is produced is mostly still by combustion. So next to transportation, heating and air conditioning is the number one use of uh, fossil fuels in this country. And saving energy is also saving money, but it's also saving or decreasing our carbon footprint, which is a very serious thing that the Sustainability Commission is concerned with. Well, I'm seeing, I'm sounding a little dire, but the fact is that groups like this and communities like Red Wing can actually get together as citizens and individuals and make a difference in a lot of different ways. So the program today is just going to talk about some of those different ways. I have some good news as far as Red Wing's uh, energy future, and that is that the city is installing an electric vehicle charging station downtown at the Mural Lot, which is behind the Red Wing Shoe Store and across the street from Marie's and from Liberty's. Uh, right now, XL Energy is providing energy that electric energy that is 67% uh, carbon-free, thanks to uh, increased wind and solar resources, and of course nuclear energy uses very little carbon to produce electricity. Excel, Excel programs, meanwhile, like wind source and solar gardens is providing 100% uh, carbon-free energy, and those programs are available, and hopefully we'll hear a little bit about that later this morning. Um, last week I took a, a trip to Rochester and back in an electrical vehicle. It happened to be a Volt with a V, and it was fairly fun and interesting, <coughs> and, and you really, really can't tell the difference between a combustion engine and electric engine, except it's quiet, it's zippy, and there are no exhaust fumes, which is a good thing. Anyway, the story today is about how we can take advantage of any energy conservation so seniors can save energy at home, and of course that translates into some financial savings as well. I'd like to remind everybody that the program is called Partners in Energy that we're dealing with, or PI. And even though it has that catchy phrase, uh, the Sustainability <coughs> Commission is delighted to uh, bring you this slice of pie and hopefully to actually be a piece of cake for you. Right. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I'm going to keep, keep it together. Um, I'm going to let Emma Strauss to talk to you. I'm going to introduce Emma and talk. she's going to talk to you about the Excel program, how it started, how it functions, and what exactly it can do for you today. So with that, I would just like to, uh, to uh, introduce Emma Strauss from the cities and from Excel Energy, and uh, she also has some other things. Oh, okay. jokes, so uh, I don't know how good my stand-up is, but thank you so much for having us here today. I'm just going to go over two quick slides to talk about what, when Stacy talks about home energy savings, how that ties into the larger community efforts that Paul was talking about. So back in 2015, the city of Red Wing um, developed an energy action plan um, through a collaboration with Partners in Energy and Excel. So it was a community-driven effort where you had a stakeholder team that had residents, businesses, um, city staff members working together to think about how Red Wing as a community could come together and think about what the energy priorities are. And one of those was to help residents save money and energy at home. So that's what we were talking about today, three years later. So just wanted to give you that context that if anyone's interested while you're having your sandwiches and talking um, during lunch to look at the energy action plan, we brought two hard copies so you can look through that. It's also online. And then the city of Red Wing completed the first phase of plan implementation and now came back to say we want to do more so that's great so that's why we're here today um, for that energy saving goals for this year we're going to learn about the home energy squad visit Stacy is going to talk about that and the citywide goal is to have um, 60 um, home energy squad visits total um, to participate and then some of the other home energy squad um, programs or home energy saving programs so just some context that you're doing
doing some important work today, part of the community effort to be here. So thanks so much. And I will call up Stacy Bootscamp now, who's our energy expert here, who's going to walk through um, the Home Energy Squad program. Yeah. Sure, I would love to. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> Can everyone see now? All right. Um, so I work at the Center for Energy and Environment. I've worked there for almost 10 years on our residential energy efficiency program. And we deliver the Home Energy Squad program uh, for CenterPoint and XL Energy. And um, so we work, we do a lot of research, which informs programs uh, that we design and deliver. Um, so I'm going to be focusing on our residential program, um, but just know that if you happen to be a business owner, um, small business, or you're connected to um, other nonprofits, utilities, we serve uh, quite a variety of clients, and we basically just want to help people save energy. So um, ask me questions afterwards. Um, so we'd like to say that we're with people every step of the way. Um, no matter if you're thinking about just doing things like shutting off the lights when you leave rooms, turning the thermostat down, some low and no cost behavior things, or if you've already done a lot of these things and you're thinking about investing in renewable energy. Uh, we have staff that can help people um, with questions on all of these different topics. And I'm going to talk about many of them today and we'll be here to answer questions too. So um, we've already gone over a lot of the benefits of energy efficiency. I did bring a couple prizes with me. So um, if you want to chime in here, maybe you can win one of those prizes. So what is one of the benefits of energy efficiency? Is that everyone? Yes. No more costs. Yes, that's always, always the first one. Um, so reducing your utility bills, put some more money in your pockets to go out and do fun things. Yes. Lowering carbon in the atmosphere. That is a, another great one. Um, that is the third one, so you still get a prize. You're, you're jumping ahead. I love it. Um, <laughs> making your home more comfortable uh, usually always goes along with energy efficiency as well. Um, and then the best of all, we're reducing our impact on the environment. And so we're doing something good not only for ourselves, but for everyone in our community. So why does this matter? Um, in terms of uh, spending on energy, the average household spends almost $2,000 a year um, on energy. And so any way that we can look at changing our behaviors or just doing some simple updates to make our homes more efficient is going to put money back in our pockets. And so it's a it actually adds up to be quite a bit of money. So I, I always like to just kind of put that out there. Um, so in our 40 years of working on energy efficiency in Minnesota, we've kind of come up with a, a recipe for an energy smart home. Uh, so that involves people having good habits, like turning down your thermostat, uh, or in the summer, turning up your thermostat, I guess. Um, using good products, and so always making sure that um, there's an Energy Star label on the products you're buying so that you know you're getting um, a really quality one so you're not going to have to drive out to the store um, and get a new one in five years when it should have lasted 20 years. So making sure to check that label and that also um, will give you access to more rebates too. There's the Energy Star label. And then making good investments in the future. So um, just getting information, doing your research, and uh, making smart home uh, decisions so that uh, instead of buying an 80% efficient furnace when your furnace goes out, uh, you can buy a 97% efficient furnace. And so then you're saving all the while and wasting a lot um, less, putting a lot less um, carbon into the air. So just making good investments. <clears throat> So there's uh, four se sections in, or four segments in your house in how people use energy. Um, so we're gonna talk about each one of these with some tips and you're probably all um, doing a few of these already. Maybe you'll get a couple ideas for saving more. Um, 
But then I'll also talk later about um, the visit where we can come and install things too that help you save. So about 10% of our energy use in Minnesota goes to heating water, uh, about 15% towards appliance use, and 20% towards using our lighting and electronics, and then the biggest chunk of it, which was already talked about, is going to heating and cooling our homes, since we live in kind of an extreme climate up here in Minnesota. Um, that's the biggest part of it. So we'll talk about all of these today. Um, so the water heater, usually at the bottom of the house in the basement, uh, both for safety and efficiency, what's recommended is having the water heater dial set at 120 degrees or below. And so that is plenty warm for people. And it also, by, by not raising it over 120 degrees, you're going to save quite a bit too. So this is a, a great, easy thing to do to capture some savings, just checking the temperature. Uh, also for safety purposes, if the water is um, just one notch up at 130 degrees, it only takes 30 seconds of the water running, the hot water running for someone to get burned. Uh, whereas at 120 degrees, it would take five minutes of the water running. So uh, I have two little kids, so I made sure uh, to check this at my house and my mom's house um, because they like to leave the water running. And another thing you can do in terms of water heating is get a water heater blanket. Um, so this just provides an additional layer of insulation uh, around the tank uh, because that tank is trying to stay at that constant temperature you have it set to. And so by uh, wrapping it again, it will stay a bit warmer, having to use less uh, natural gas or electricity, whichever your fuel source is for your water heater. Um, how many of you flush your water heater? And it, it's not a real popular thing to do, but <laughs> good for you. Um, so this is a great thing, no cost to do this. A um, couple times a year, it's good to just flush out the sediment from the water heater. Uh, that cleans off the coils so they can actually be um, more efficient in heating the water. So just by clearing the sediment out, uh, that's going to make it uh, work better and hopefully prolong the life of it because that, um, those particles aren't swirling around on the bottom of the tank. So here's a couple pictures of how you do it. You can either you know, open it and dump, uh, get the water pouring into a bucket or connect a hose and just flush out a couple gallons. You don't have to turn off the hot water or the gas or anything, um, but it's just, it's just a good home maintenance thing to do. Uh, also in terms of water heating, uh, water saving fixtures, and so high efficiency shower heads, uh, faucet aerators, these are great ways of saving um, because it not only saves water usage, but also for the heating of the water. Um, and so now water isn't extremely expensive, but I think probably in years to come it will get more expensive. Um, and so just really seeing the benefits of these um, is a great thing to, to capture those savings right away. Appliances, we're up to the second level here. Um, so how many people are already washing their clothes in cold water? Show of hands, we're doing little exercises. Keep everyone awake, all right. Almost everyone, that's great. Um, so by washing your clothes in cold water, it can save you up to 90% of the energy used per load because a lot of the energy actually goes to heating the water. Uh, and by washing in cold water, as you probably know, since you're, most of you are already doing it, uh, it helps the colors last longer, so then you have to make less trips to the store to buy more new clothes, saving on pollution. Um, just a couple of things I throw in with some home maintenance things for safety and efficiency. Dryer vents, as long as we're talking about doing the laundry. So while these uh, flexible ducts on the dryer vents are very convenient, um, what's actually recommended are the rigid ducts, uh, and so getting the, the rigid pipes and get, taping them together with not duct tape but foil tape um, to give it a good airflow. Because if your dryer has a really uh, good airflow, then it's going to function more efficiently, uh, use less gas or electricity. And also, these can end up looking like this. Um, so as the years go on, the, the lint just kind of builds up in there and then that can become a fire hazard. 
And I just used to talk about this anecdotally, but um, birds actually do try to build their nests in here. I have found one trying to build a nest in mine when I checked it this summer. So um, just periodically checking where uh, the dryer vent terminates outside of the house to make sure that's not getting backed up with mm -hmm. wind or little twigs. Uh, just a good thing to do for your peace of mind too. So refrigerators, anyone have a refrigerator like this? Might have been manufactured the year I was born. Um, it's, we have a saying at the Center for Energy and Environment that if your appliance is old enough to vote, might be time to switch it out. This one's been voting a long time, so uh, probably out with the old on this one. Um, and so when you are shopping for replacement appliances, um, like I said before, it's always good to look for the Energy Star label uh, and the Energy Guide. And so that yellow guide will show you um, all, a comparison of all um, similar models, and then the, it shows you the one that you're looking at about how much energy that's going to use and probably cost you per year. So just a couple things to keep in mind uh, if you're shopping for a refrigerator. Now this one is a great color. They don't really have that many nice colors on the market, but <laughs> gonna have to settle for a boring white one. But this one probably uses at least $150 uh, less of electricity per year, since it is one of your appliances that's always running. Um, it's great to, to just think about switching those out. And there are also programs that can help people with that. Um, so at our home energy squad visits, we qualify people uh, to, to take advantage of those programs um, if, if they're available. Uh, there's also great refrigerator recycling programs. So if you do have the fridge like this and you get a fridge like this, don't put that green one in the basement for, uh, for holidays or beverages, uh, unless you unplug it every time. Um, but you won't be saving if you just move it downstairs, of course. So um, for all the rebates that we'll be talking about, you can go to XL Energy's website, um, and they do have some great refrigerator programs. Okay, we're up to the next level. Lighting and electronics, 20% of our energy use. So I don't know if anyone recognizes this little contraption here. It has little delightful cookies. Do you remember how, how these cookies were baked? Anyone? Another chance to win a prize here. Yes, yes. Um, so the Easy Bake Ovens use incandescent light bulbs uh, to bake miniature cakes and brownies. And so the reason that that works is because 90% um, of the energy used with incandescent light bulbs actually goes to producing heat um, rather than creating light which you would think it would be creating light for a light bulb. <laughs> but um, light bulbs have been very inefficient for a long time until the past couple decades or so. Uh, so save your incandescent light bulbs for your easy bake ovens and be thankful that you're not gonna be wasting so much uh, money by using an inefficient incandescents anymore. So kind of the first wave of light bulbs that we saw come along were the halogen light bulbs. Um, so these do use a little bit less electricity, but usually they only last about a year or two. And so then you have the issue of having to replace them often, which is kind of annoying. Second uh, wave that kind of came along were the compact fluorescent light bulbs, or CFLs. Uh, these light bulbs do use 75% less uh, electricity but they don't um, always last as long as people think they would, and they do contain a little bit of mercury, which needs to be handled properly. Um, so people weren't like thrilled with these. I still have a lot in my house. We're kind of slowly moving to the LEDs. Um, but we see it more as a bridge. The, the fluorescent light bulbs is a bridge between the incandescent light bulbs and the LEDs. So, um, while talking about them, I like to remind people um, that they do need to be recycled if you have some of the compact fluorescent light bulbs. So LED light bulbs, kind of the first wave that we saw were the, the under cabinet lighting or with our flashlights, um, that disco ball that you'll probably be breaking out for New Year's Eve, right? Maybe there's one in this room. Look at all this cool stuff here. Um, 
but those all were kind of specialty uses for LED light bulbs. Uh, now we have uh, a wide range of residential uh, options for different light bulbs, and these are really great. Are some of you already using a lot of these? Yeah? They're awesome because um, some of them even last 25 years, and so that's great for those really hard to reach places, so you're not having to get the ladder out and switch them out all the time. Uh, and, and they don't have the mercury, which people like as well. So uh, I get a lot of questions about like, how do I know which light bulb to buy now that you can't just look for the 60 watt incandescent, which was the most commonly used light bulb. Um, so now uh, how you can judge what you're, what you're kind of looking for is by looking for the lumens. The lumens are um, the, like the amount of brightness that the light bulb produces. Uh, and so right around 3,000, 2,700, 3,000 uh, lumens is uh, most comparable to a standard 60 watt incandescent light bulb. Um, that's also um, what we, we also want to look at the color temperature. And so um, the, actually the color temperature, I'm sorry, is around 3,000 for the Kelvins for the incandescent <laughs> light bulb. And the lumens are, are more around like somewhere between 700 and uh, 1,000 um, for the measure of brightness. So these are kind of kind of funny like a nutrition label. Um, but there's, there's a little um, bright light guide that you can find online too that shows you what you might be looking for. And here's a, just another picture of the color scheme. And so, like I said, right around here is, it was the incandescent 60 watt, most commonly used light bulb. All right, can anyone, can you see these little beady eyes staring at you? Yeah. All right, what might that be? Another, another guess, another prize. Your appliances you really plugged in. You are right again. Two prizes for you today. <laughs> It might be your family room, you're right. And so, um, although it looks like nothing's happening in this room, um, there is a lot of electricity that's being wasted. Uh, so anything with any sort of lighting display, soft touch keypad, remote control, uh, all of those things are just ready to be, comp to be immediately turned on. And so they're, they're pulling a electric current that you're paying for um, all the time. And so by putting your electronics on a power management system, um, and that can be very levels of, of sophistication, um, but by doing that, you can often save about 10 to $15 per year uh, per entertainment kind of area that you put on that. So uh, a couple different options. I, I guess you could just like unplug it from the wall, but it's not always so easy to get behind your entertainment center and do that. Um, so I've seen people just split the uh, electronics off onto two separate power cords. Uh, one that they leave constantly on, and then the others that they can turn off. Good habits, remember? Back to the, to the recipe, having the good habits uh, of turning those off, when you're also having the good habit of turning off the lights when you leave the room. They have these smart strips. I have them like this in my house. Uh, and so, do any of you have one of these? They're kind of cool, because you just set them, up, set them up and then you kind of forget about it. Uh, but the blue one here, you'd plug your TV into that one, and then the blue one controls the green ones. So when you turn off your TV, uh, you can also turn off your DVD player. If you have a game system, um, those can all be turned off. And then the red ones, you, le you leave constantly on. Um, like the modem and the router. Of course, you can turn those off too, um, but we want to make energy saving easy for people so they keep doing it. Um, and so these are really nice because they're convenient and you can still feel good about saving. Because when you turn the TV off, yeah? What about if you, if you turn the TV off and you have something programmed to tape or record later, would that affect that? So I would pl uh, plug like the recording system in that case into a, a socket that would remain constantly on ah. um, because then you won't lose that programming. Okay. Um, and then there's, there's other models that you can, can look at too, but um, 
it it's, doesn't make a lot of sense to just be wasting um, when we're not using things and you can feel good uh, about saving and help doing something for your community. Because if everyone did this, um, we'd be saving a lot. It all adds up. So we have a, a motto. Actually, we have a mascot called uh, Tolby. And it stands for turn off lights behind you. So um, that's why we have this on here. When you have the good habit of turning off the light when you leave the room, you can also turn off the electronics. All right, we're up to the top of the house now, the big part, big savings here. 55% of our energy use. So how many people already have a programmable thermostat? Great, do you have it programmed? Yeah, I have to check mine every morning, make sure my husband didn't put it on hold. Um, but that's the key is having a program to not put it on hold. And so these are nice because you can also just set these up and then forget about them unless you have to change the battery. You might want to set up a reminder for that. Um, how many people are you, does anyone have a smart thermostat? Oh, wow. No. no these, these are um, kind of the newest thing on the market. We have started installing them at our home energy visits. Um, but these are Wi-Fi connected, and so you can, uh, you know, save, you can go on your uh, phone and turn up your heat before you get home on a cold January night or something. Um, and so you can be saving that whole time uh, and then just turn it up. Or um, they are learning as well, so they kind of learn what people's behaviors are and try to adapt to that. Um, they also have some behavioral science built into them, um, and they kind of compare people's energy use to how their neighbors are using energy. And if you're winning, if you're saving the most energy, you get these little green leaves sent to you um, to give you a little pat on the back. So uh, there's all these kind of uh, more advanced things that are coming along with smart homes. Um, some people like them, others don't. Um, you'll save still if you're using a programmable thermostat or if you just have the good habit of turning it down yourself. So as winter uh, is approaching, did you all get some snow here the other day like we did? I live up in Lake though, so my kids love the snow. I didn't like it so much, but uh, winter is coming. So I like to remind people just about tips, bleeding your radiators if you have um, hot water heat in your home. Also switching furnace filters. Um, it's, I'm sure you all have, have great habits, but I did visit a surprising number of houses when I used to do energy audits and found that so many people didn't know they had a furnace filter um, or they didn't know they had to switch it out. And so I just like to throw it in here as a reminder. Um, there are different kinds and they all need to be switched out at different variations, which I'm sure you've all been doing. So um, we'll move on to the other issues in, in homes. So uh, oftentimes if people are feeling uncomfortable in their homes, what we see when we're doing uh, energy audits is maybe they have a couch in front of a register um, and so they're not getting that airflow in the home, which causes people to turn up their thermostats and use more energy than they, than they need to be. So just trying to move things around so there's at least you know, a foot away from the register. Um, also, if you can see any of the duct work in your basement, a kind of easy thing to do is just get that foil tape and uh, tape around the joints. That will give your uh, give it a better airflow so you're getting more heat or I guess air conditioning delivered to the place you want it to go. <coughs> so just a, a few fun tips. Um, so there are lots of things people can do themselves to make their homes more comfortable. Putting wind plastic on the windows, um, doing the caulking around the windows, using these gasket seals on the exterior walls to block the drafts from coming in. Um, but ultimately, if you're feeling like your home is pretty drafty, there's probably a larger issue at hand. And so here's a picture of, of how a house is kind of functioning. Um, so if there's a lot of heat that's allowed to escape from um, the heated space of the house to the unheated space, um, that warm air is going to rise up and out, and it's going to draw in uh, cold, dry air from outside and make your home feel really drafty. Um, and so 
this is one of the things we look at when we do energy audits is how a home is, is performing, how tight it might be, or uh, and where it could be tightened up a little bit to make it more comfortable and efficient. Uh, another sign that your house might be losing a lot of energy, like I said, that, that air that gets pulled in is really cold and dry in the winter. Um, so if you're finding like you, you want to use a lot of humidification in the house, um, that could be a sign that your home is, is leaky and wasting a lot of energy. Um, so just, just signs to look for, because if you can cut down on um, using the humidifier so much, you can save energy on your electric bill too. Uh, another sign, uh, if you're seeing ice dams that form in the winter time, uh, that's a, usually an indicator that there is, even if you have enough insulation, um, if these uh, penetrations that go from the heated space to the unheated space uh, are not sealed properly, that warm air, it melts the snow on the roof and then refreezes over the unheated soffit, which can build up to an ice dam, and if it gets bad enough, it can back up into your house, and that's, that's not a fun thing to deal with. So, um, simply, you know, learning about these things and how we can um, remedy them is, is a good thing to do, uh, both for durability and the other benefits we've talked about. So this is an actual attic, uh, this is a flue pipe going through an attic, so you can see there's a lot of space around that where that warm air just gushes out. Uh, but there are a lot of other things too. So um, where you enter into the, the attic hatch, any place where there are any cables, light fixtures, around chimneys, those are all places um, that need to be sealed up to keep that nice warm air in your house in the winter. Um, so like I said, we deliver the Home Energy Squad program. We come out and help people learn about their homes. Um, because not many people actually want to climb up to, into their attics and look at these things. Uh, so the Home Energy Squad is for one to four unit buildings. Um, there are also multi-family building efficiency programs. Um, and like I said, the electric uh, appliance saving program. Um, when we come out, we qualify people for that as the Home Energy Saving Program. Uh, and that is something um, where you can get access to new appliances, new air conditioners, um, if your household is income qualified. So we do free visits for income qualified households. Um, so it's a really great thing that Excel Energy offers. And um, here's the, the sheet for this. Uh, if you don't qualify for a free visit, we also are offering $30 discounts for you, those of you who came out to, to learn more today. Or maybe you haven't learned anything, but at least you're listening to us talk for an hour. So you deserve something, huh? Um, so the discount, I mentioned that. Uh, and so what happens at these visits? So they're about two, two and a half hours. There are two uh, energy consultants that come out. Uh, they do some testing, like uh, a blower door test, insulation inspection, testing the heating system and water heater in the home. Uh, and then we also give you a report with next steps, what it might cost if you wanted to do these improvements, um, and any rebates that you qualify for. And then we, we're there to help you with next steps too. Uh, so we just wanna make it easy for people to make their homes more comfortable, stop wasting energy, and just have a general peace of mind that your home is functioning as efficiently as possible. So here's some of the, the friendly faces that come out to uh, visit people. And uh, just a few pictures of some of the things that we do at the visit. And we install lots of products too, so that maybe is even the best part for some folks. Um, so we install things like door weather stripping around uh, exterior doors, water heater blankets like I mentioned before, uh, programmable thermostats, LED light bulbs if you still have incandescent light bulbs, uh, high efficiency shower heads, faucet aerators. So we're there to save you as much energy right away. So it's great to have these professionals um, who will come in and do all of this. And there's no charge um, for these, these products. So we'll install as many of them as we can. Um, it's really a great deal. And then we also give you a report, like I said. 
And if, uh, if there is a recommendation for doing the air sealing and insulation in our home, in your home, uh, the technician will actually write up an insulation quote, which is honored by um, several participating contractors. Uh, and people have really liked this new addition to our program. Um, so we're a nonprofit organization. We're just here to provide information about energy efficiency. Um, but some people, they don't want to, you know, take off three, four days of work to get all of these things done in their homes. And so um, by putting everything together in one visit, we've really um, tried to streamline things to make it easy for people to make their homes more efficient. Uh, and like I said, we try to help people after the visits too. Um, so we have a team of energy advisors that helps people with questions uh, on contractors, rebates, financing. Uh, we just want to make it easy for you to take those next steps. So um, that's what I have to tell you about the Home Energy Squad today. Um, and I'll be here to answer questions. If you would like to sign up for a visit, uh, I have visits that you can sign up for. Uh, and I brought prizes too. So those of you who won your prizes, don't forget to come and get them afterwards. Um, so that's what I have for you today. And I don't know if there was another part of the program or we want to take questions now. I think it's questions in the board. Okay, great. All right, well, thanks for your attention and your participation. Yeah, I have a question about venting in your home, in your attic, as far as your soffit uh, vents and things like that. Does this program, do you look at that or do you consider that as a big part of this or, or not? Uh, well, when they're writing up the insulation quote, if that is uh, a recommendation, they're also trained to look at you know, what the proper venting would be and they would put that as a line item in the, in the quote. Or if you don't need any, they can just tell you it looks good and then that gives you peace of mind. Yes? Do they do like a furnace check too? Or air conditioning? Do they kind of well, we test the heating system and water heater to make sure that they're drafting properly out of your house uh, and not producing high levels of carbon monoxide. We don't test the air conditioners. Uh, we would test it if it was not in the winter <laughs> and we were installing a thermostat, but we don't service them. There's other programs that, that service furnaces and air conditioners. Any other questions? Maybe everyone just... Are you, are you doing the furnace efficiency test? Uh, well, we do um, check the age of the furnace and we can estimate how efficient the furnace is. Okay. But, but not, we, don't, we don't have the tools that specifically test it for the efficiency it's running in. Yes? I, uh, I'm just curious about those furnace filters you showed that were so <laughs> interesting. Um, what, what actually happens to the furnace at that point? It can't be putting out very much air. What, what happens? Well, I, more times than I saw super dirty ones, I just saw no filter. Oh. Um, so that would just be hurting the furnace by pulling in things that you don't want pulled in there. Um, but yes, if, if it was a really dirty filter, it would often be very, uh, very bent, uh, almost pulling back into the furnace. And I can't imagine it's functioning very efficiently then. So we're there for all kinds of reasons, um, just to help give, like I said, give people peace of mind um, that they're safe and healthy in their home. Yes? Are there s still, um, like the one that you had to change every month is that an older furnace because you would think that in 2018 you that type of furnace wouldn't even be on the market if you had to change it that often uh, well I most of the high efficiency furnaces now do have the larger box style um, filter but uh, not everyone has a, a brand new furnace so there are still a lot of the older ones out there that use varied sizes of filters. What, what is the life expectancy of a furnace and a water heater? Oh. For a furnace? In this oh. area, we were told because the water is so hard that if you get 10 years out of a water heater, you are lucky. 
so what is the life expectancy of a, of a furnace? Generally, we tell people 18 to 20 years is about the expected lifetime for a furnace. And for a water heater, uh, it's like 10 to 13 years is the expected life. But, I mean, I, it does totally depend on water quality. Maybe not totally, but it has a big part of it. I've seen water heaters last for five years. I've seen some last for 40 years. Um, I think that one was in Bloomington. They also have very good ball, water quality in Bloomington. Um, so yeah, but that's what we tell people at, at the visits and that's what's kind of assumed for lifetimes. Good question. Any other questions? Yes. We, we have a wireless control that you can hold and just turn off lights and things that are plugged in, <coughs> which would be helpful maybe for, because it's hard to have to go and turn it off, you know, next to the outlet every yeah. time. So. Yeah, that, that one, I think maybe I didn't point it out, that uh, bigger power strip, it actually has a little, like, remote that you can okay. mount oh. right next to your... Yeah. Um, light switch, which, which is really convenient for people, um, and that uh, enables people to say they don't want it too. But very good point. One, we want to make it easy for people to save, or the habits don't stick. Yes. What about those letters that we get that say we are better than our neighbor or less, not as good? Are those quite accurate? I believe that they compare them um, to like size homes, similar, uh, like a similar scenario. Um, and uh, they do those reports all over the country. Um, so I believe they have a lot of data on how that, uh, the, the company that, has des that designed them originally. Um, but yeah, we get a lot of calls from people and they're like, I just got this report and I'm using more than my neighbor. I need, I need to figure this out. Well, do those reports distinguish between electric furnaces and natural gas? I, you know, I'm not sure about that. Um, we don't, I, I don't deal directly with the reports, so I don't know all of the, uh, idiosyncrasies of how okay. it's compared. A, a lot of what they do, Stacy, is they look at the, the different areas or the common building types. So lots of times if natural gas goes to an area, you normally have a high concentration of natural gas furnaces there. But it, it, lots of times if you have electric heat, it, your neighbors don't have electric heat too just because it's not available there to go to natural gas or um, for whatever reason. So it may be if for some reason that's kind of off the norm, you've got the electric heat running, it won't pick it up. But if it's one of those where you don't have natural gas in the area, then the reports do reflect that. Okay, thank you. I, I have electric heat. All my neighbors have natural gas. Oh, oh so you probably come up with a higher I've always wondered. Hey, I'm just curious about the blower. They're always showing the blower that they put on the door. How does that work? What are they testing? Or does, you know, how does that work? What, what is that about? So it's depressurizing the home. Um, and so it kind of mimics a 20 mile an hour wind coming at your house. Um, but to do the blower test, they um, close all of the windows and the doors. And then um, that fan blows air outside of your house. And so then uh, air comes in wherever there's air leaks. And you can, you can feel the air leaks. Um, the infrared camera helps to, you know, exit with working with the blower door tap. The blower door, if there's a big temperature difference, helps to really uh, accentuate where those temperature differences are. Um, and so, yeah, that depressurizes the home, and then we take a measurement of how much air is moving through the fan um, compared to the square footage of the house, and that you know, gets put into a formula that tells you how leaky or tight your home is. We really need to have some fresh air coming into our houses, though, don't we? Yes, that's very important. So how is that measured? Uh, with newer homes, they actually need to have mechanical ve ventilation because they're built quite um, 
tight. Quite tight. And so they either would have um, a heat recovery ventilator or energy recover. It's like a big ventilation system, um, like in the furnace room, that exchanges the indoor and outdoor air. Um, otherwise, um, some people, with, when they tighten up their homes to provide continuous ventilation, they get a bath fan um, that runs all the time at a very low speed. Um, there's some that you can't even hear, um, but that just kind of brings in like a trickle of, of fresh air. And so there is, still is fresh air coming in, but it's not increasing your heating or cooling costs because it's just a tiny bit. Very good question. All right. I have a quick cool well, question. That, Who's had a home, has anyone had a home energy score on this before? Yeah. Oh, you did? Yeah, like two years ago. Great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you've been raping the savings for two years. Well, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> and where is it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. But they put in CFL bulbs. And none of them have burnt out except right away two bulbs burnt out in my ceiling fan, but I think they put too much wattage in it. Oh, okay. And that's why they burnt out, because the other two produce enough wattage for me to read at night, and then two burnt out in the hallway, so I just put in regular bulbs in there. Other than that, the rest of them are all still going. You've got your heat room blanket. Yeah, just oh, within okay. the past couple years, we've switched from installing the compact fluorescent bulbs to the LED to bulbs. The LED bulbs now. Yeah. Are you replacing CFLs? Not yet. No, that's not part of the program. Halogen light bulbs and incandescent light bulbs. So. How about a hand for Stacy and her entire experience? Um, the whole point of this is just to make these programs available, and since this is actually sponsored by Excel, and you're paying uh, just a very tiny fraction of your energy bill goes to these kinds of programs, which actually helps everybody. So it's important that people know that this is uh, an ongoing program. And actually, uh, I think it was really interesting how it's evolving, which is different. Yeah. As, as things become more available and this information uh, becomes available, people get a chance to learn more and experience more. So thank you for that. Um, thank you. I certainly, uh, <laughs> I learned a lot today, which oh, is good. great. So I think it's fun to...